Hey Tom, when do you think zippers are gonna be added to scout pants? Shucks, George, I hope never. Why? Sure would we'll make things go a lot faster. I guess you're right. But how are you gonna repair it in the field? You just can't go tramping around with your barn door open. Yeah, I guess you're right. And what about getting hurt? Getting hurt? What does zippers have to do anything with first aid? You know, getting caught. Getting caught? Oh, getting caught. Didn't think about that one. Let's hope they never catch on then. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Mr. Dyer's Musings. Today, we're gonna talk about pants. As always, I like to thank my wife and family for their unconditional support. I like to thank my students for pushing me always to be better. I like to thank you, my viewers and my subscribers for taking the time to watching these videos. Hopefully you're learning something from them. If nothing else, you're getting a few minutes of entertainment out of it and me getting excited over old things. Um, I like to, if you are new to my channel, please check out my old videos, see if it's something you like. Please consider subscribing. Uh, please share. That way it helps this channel grow and uh, it pushes me to be ever better. All right, so let's get to it. Something that's may not be all that exciting to your average person, but for some reason I got kind of geeked out about is are the pants for my sons and my new living history impression. You know, we were trying to get the clothing and the stuff and we've been able to do it so far fairly affordably. I'm not gonna say it's been cheap, but affordably in comparison to other uh, living historical eras. And this is all original stuff. And that's pretty cool when you can pick up original stuff and you can wear it and you can use it because it's in good enough condition that it's not going to tear or rip just by looking at it. Boy Scout equipment was advertised, and I assume that it's true. Everything that has the Boy Scout seal on it was tested, supposedly pretty rigorously. And it was made out of materials that they knew was going to withstand the tests and rigors of outdoor use. Consider like the Boy Scouts of Equipment catalog the same as like an REI catalog today. Um, it's good stuff. It's really good stuff. And they try to provide everything you could possibly need to go camping and do your thing. And not everything that the Boy Scouts sold had their logo on it. Most did, like the majority of equipment did. But an example would be like a match case. A match case that was produced by another party did not have the BSA logo on it. Now later, the Boy Scouts must have partnered with someone and um, in like the 50s and 40s, etc., cetera, and uh, labeled or put a logo on their match case. But the time period that I've been collecting stuff for, which is the 1920s and 1930s, not everything had it. Pants, uniforms, are the exception though. Every bit of uniform had a stamp on it or some type of marker noting that it was a Boy Scout piece of equipment. Sometimes you have to look pretty hard and sometimes the logo is so faded because it was used, it was washed, um, you just kind of know from other signs. The earliest piece of uh, uniform equipment that I have are pants. And not actually pants because uh, they're not designed the same way. They're called breeches, the Jodhpur breeches. Now, Jodhpur breeches um, look kind of goofy by today's standards, but in the 1920s, they were pretty popular. And even men coming back from World War I wore them. Breeches, for the most part, was a sign of youth. All right, so what are breeches? You probably heard your grandparent or maybe your parent say, hey, pull up your breeches, right? Well, breeches have a very distinguishing feature and that down at the legs, they tie. Now, if you're an outdoor enthusiast, this is actually a pretty important piece. And I kind of wish that we would go back to this 
Um, and that's fairly comfortable. It's not like it's a pain in the butt. It takes a little more time because you have to lace these up and they close off your leg. So ticks, um, other bugs, insects, etc. It makes it a little bit more difficult for them to get in. So that's pretty nice. Now, Jonaper breeches, specifically, flare out. Kind of like you see here. You see on the right side. Well, that'd be your, probably your left side. I don't know. But yeah, on this side, they have flare outs. I'll post a picture. But why that was popular, honestly, I don't know. I can give some practical reasons why it might be popular. But in truth, I don't have any primary sources that tell me why they were popular. Um, so riding horseback was still fairly common, even in the 1920s and in the 1930s. A lot of your farms, even in the 1930s, were not mechanized entirely. So horseback riding, um, it gives a lot more slack, so you're not going to tear your pants as you're trying to get on and off. Um, Military influence, of course. The soldiers, especially cavalry, were still wearing bre breeches even to the 1940s, at the beginning of World War II. Uh, they, they're more airy. So if you've ever worked out in the summer and you're you're more familiar with like air conditioning, having loose fitting clothing is very comfortable to work out in the heat, to work out in the outdoors. So those are my speculations why the breeches were so popular. And again, because they tie down the leg, you're not going to get agitated by um, insects as much. You are not going to have a higher chance of getting poison ivy or poison oak or something like that. So these breeches were made, my best guess, in the early 1900s, even before the 1930s. So they're like 1920s, maybe 1910s. They do not currently have any BSA logo that is still able to be seen. However, however, Eisner, who was a popular maker in the 1920s, in fact, Eisner was the sole manufacturer of BSA uniforms until like 1932 or something like that. So don't quote me on it. I'm just giving you a rough idea. Here is a tag. Now, as you can see, it's completely washed out. But other Boy Scout equipment that has this type of tag were made by Eisner, okay? Um, that's my best guess. It is, it fits my son perfectly. Another thing that tells me the age is the back. So this back style where you have the clasp, that's like a, a vest type buckle. Um, this can loosen and tighten as will, so it can fit larger or looser depending on your size. That went away. This popular back went out of favor for style in the 19, well, 1920s pretty much. In the 1930s, they try to be more form-fitting. Um, they try to get away from the more what's considered rural type, one size fits all clothing. The buttons do not give me any hints. They're not BSA buttons. They say USA on them. Um, and that's it. Like, that's, that's all I got. They're USA buttons. Could these be military pants? Yes. Yes, they could. Um, because, I mean, men in the 1920s were certainly smaller than men today. You know, we eat a little bit better, a little healthier, we're stockier, etc. So maybe these pants are military pants. However, they are the same cut, the same color, they even have like the same trim as uh, Boy Scout equipment that fits that time period. And it has the Eisner, what I suspect is the Eisner tag. Eisner made military equipment, so it could be. But I'm sticking to the idea that this was Boy Scout. And you know, let's be honest, you've heard me say it in other videos, in the 1920s, and even today to an extent, 
Um, a lot of scouts use surplus military equipment. So does it fit? Yes. Is it 100% Boy Scout? Unsure. Fairly certain, but unsure. If you know, though, if there's something that I showed you that was a pretty crisp detail that says, ah, that's definitely Boy Scout, let me know. Put it in the comments or message me. I'd appreciate it. The next pair of breeches I have for you, again, it has the eyelets. It has less, or I'm sorry, more eyelets here than what the other ones do. And you can see how they're kind of laced up now, too. Kind of like, uh, you know, just your standard shoelaces. Boom, bam. There they go. On the back, if you notice, it does not have the clasp. And this one also has buttons on the back. This one did not on either side. This one does. And it says Boy Scouts of America on the button. So we know for sure that this is Boy Scouts. Even on the fly, which by the way, if you're unfamiliar with button flies, they still had button flies in the 1920s, 1930s, and 1940s. So there's a fly button, Boy Scouts of America. But honestly, the tall tale, if you miss the buttons sign, it tells you it's a Boy Scout. Just look at all those BSA logos. Now, breeches were used from the beginning of BSA until the 1940s, and then they fell out of favor. Uh, I don't think this has any maker mark besides that. But as far as I can tell, this style of lining, the BSA lining that was used, was predominant in the 1930s, early 19, well, like the mid-1930s or to 1940s. So we can date these pants to that time frame. It still fits within our, our use. They're still breeches. They're still very similar to the same color, but not quite. But, you know, this one was washed. Maybe it faded out. It's hard to tell what the original color exactly looked like. Same thing with these. I'm sure these were washed. It's hard to tell what the original color was. But that's it. Those are the Boy Scout breeches. Now, Scout Masters also use breeches. Um, many of them use slacks or pants, but um, a lot of them wore the breeches, and uh, it's, it's perfectly fine. Just because boys tended to grow out of breeches and they, you know, wearing pants was almost a sign of manhood. When you're outdoors and you are doing outdoorsy things, pants, honestly, um, they're, they're a little inferior. In my opinion, anyways, they're certainly a little inferior. Breeches that have more room, have more stretch. If you run or whatever, you're not going to tear out the seat of your pants. If you've ever had that happen, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And the material... Like, this is like duck canvas, almost like material. That's, that's heavy duty, right? You're going to have a hard time doing damage to that compared to just plain cotton slacks or even wool slacks. Wool slacks, they certainly have a little bit of durability, but the type of wool and the weave of wool in the 1950s and 1930s, you know, that time area, it was meant more for looks, not so much durability. There you have it. There's probably one of my shortest videos ever is talking about pants. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Please like, please subscribe, please share my, grow it, help me. I sincerely appreciate it. And if you have anything to add, please do. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much. Have a great week. Give a kiss and a hug to your loved ones and take care.